Uh, the financial secretary of Hong Kong wrote in a blog over the weekend that it, it's going to take about six months to, to reverse the economic impact from this coronavirus pandemic. Can, can businesses like you survive in the next six months? Wow. I mean, um, I think many may not survive six weeks, to be honest. Uh, this is uh, unprecedented difficult times. And as we know, I mean, this obviously started more than two months ago. So um, we are seeing a lot of empty stores, not just restaurants, but any types of retail. And of course, last month, Hong Kong had unprecedented drop in total retail value drop in around 44 percent. So so this is going to be extremely difficult. And F&B, of course, is severely affected uh, by the latest regulation. How will Hong Kong look? When this is all said and done, David, will there be some habits and behaviors that will be permanently changed? Well, um, we certainly see that, you know, number one, you know, people from a health standpoint, from a food standpoint, people will be a lot more conscious or people are already uh, becoming a lot more conscious about uh, food and about lifestyle, about wellness. Um, that's for sure. I think sustainability uh, will be a big topic um, across the holistic lifestyle. Uh, and also kind of a broader spectrum of the economy is um, people will, will examine, if business and people in general, and, and also governments, I think, um, will examine, you know, what are the, the kind of the loopholes or what are the, the potential risks? Where are the vulnerable spots? And uh, in terms of what we do, of course, you know, we have been saying uh, about the risk or the vulnerability of our very animal or meat-heavy uh, food supply chain for a long time. It uh, clearly has, a, has an impact, a negative impact on climate change, on food security. Um, and uh, a lot of people now realize that many of the diseases, I mean, coronavirus is not the first one. It's actually, the, there, there have been so many examples of uh, diseases transmitted from animals to uh, human beings. So uh, we see that type of consciousness will rise dramatically. Mm. David, it's Tom here in Beijing. I know you've got eight stores and cafes in the city. What steps have you had to take to try and mitigate the economic impact? Give us an update on your business. Have you had to shutter any stores? Sure. Are you close to having yeah. to close stores? Are you, are you having to cut headcount? Uh, what, what measures? Are you getting, extracting any rent discounts from your landlords? Well, uh, first of all, we um, finally, I think the last month or two, I mean, there are some landlords, you know, who had been kind of you know, rejecting the idea of uh, any type of rent reduction. Finally, some took action. Uh, still, not all of them, I got to say, and I'm still very disappointed in that. But in terms of our own operation, um, we, we happen to have, have a very diversified model. Um, on one hand, we have our F&B, uh, you know, kind of the restaurant side, which definitely is hit hard, just like um, most of the dining uh, and F&B services, uh, not just in the city, but around the world. But we have our grocery side of business, uh, not just in our stores, but also our distribution to all the, uh, you know, supermarket channels and grocery channels. And that has soared because obviously people are staying home or working from home and the demand for grocery uh, has gone much higher. Uh, and then online shopping. I mean, we have double, actually our online sales has more than double uh, just comparing, you know, after and before the virus outbreak. Um, again, same same rationale, which is people are uh, clearly staying home. So um, we are a little bit more fortunate in the sense that uh, we set out to be a more diversified uh, uh, approach in our business. Uh, but there's no doubt the F&B side is severely affected. And um, many pure restaurants, pure play restaurants, um, may not be able to survive this uh, unprecedented crisis. What does the roadmap to recovery look like then for the FMB business, for the retail business in Hong Kong? Well, I mean, first of all, delivery, uh, takeaway, <laughs> uh, online sales, uh, online grocery, and, you know, just delivery uh, services. That will, I think people, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing with the coronavirus I mean, is it, it won't just, I mean, people will continue to be afraid because this is happening globally, right? So even if the cases in Hong Kong come down, let's say in the next, you know, couple of weeks, for example, um, but the cases around the world are not stopping yet. So travel will be, 
you know, limited uh, tourism will be minimal. I think this year it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, an extremely difficult year uh, till Q3, Q4, because there will be tourism and business travel will be uh, kind of not just ground to a halt, but even when it recovers, it will be very minimal. So focusing on necessity, focusing on daily needs and, of course, the local audience. Um, and having, you know, ad- adapting, you know, to this new normal of lifestyle. These will be the, the crucial steps, I think, to, for business to survive. David, has the government done enough for businesses like you that, that need to keep the lights on, need to keep your staff at work? I mean, we, we were talking about this $1,300 cash handouts could be facing some delays now. Will it be too late to undo the damage, you think? Oh, um, <laughs> I think uh, the damage is is at a level that we have not seen before. Um, that help uh, certainly is better than nothing. Um, but with the latest restriction on F and B uh, and bars, uh, there definitely will need to be a second um, kind of installment or second round of government support or subsidy. Um, it Otherwise, definitely a lot of business just simply cannot survive. We're talking about a sudden drop of, a complete drop of income and cash flow. Um, and we no, all know that's the recipe uh, for disaster in any business. So um, how to bring the economy back and how to get, uh, you know, kind of normal consumption pattern to resume, that will be a huge challenge. And I think you know, governments around the world, and Hong Kong certainly included, will need to be very proactive and very aggressive, I think, in terms of um, giving lifelines to uh, businesses in general, particularly small businesses. And David, when it comes to the, the kind of meatless revolution, uh, you, you early on uh, were, were had holdings of Beyond Meat. The stock is down close to 40 percent in a month. Have you had to adjust your holdings in any way for Beyond Meat? Um, that's not something we openly uh, discuss, although um, I do think uh, this is, you know, this is happening to all stocks, right? I mean, and there are actually many sectors that are hit much worse. Um, what we see is um, we, okay, what we are seeing in our own business, right? I mean, I was uh, mentioning how um, our grocery side of business has surged. It surged close to 80% uh, because people are staying home. That's uh, through our retail channels of supermarkets and our online sales has doubled. So I know firsthand uh, that actually non-dairy items and meat alternative items actually are even more in demand uh, as people read more, study more, and start to, you know, now everyone has more time to read and to learn from a health aspect and environmental aspect um, of everything. And food certainly is a big part of that. So. Um, and then we know, for example, in the U.S., um, you know, over the last few weeks when everyone is rushing to the supermarket to buy things, I mean, oat milk sales or non-dairy milk sales, I mean, is up 400 percent or 500 percent week to week, which are, I mean, phenomenal figures. So um, what what I am seeing and what we as an as a sector of plant space uh, and alternative meat, I think what we are seeing is, um, in fact, it's very promising signs that this may be a catalyst uh, to accelerate growth, particularly in Asia when previously the awareness was not as high. 